What's up? First and foremost, thank you guys for taking the time out of your day to come listen. Uh, this will be a short and sweet lesson. So just to kind of give the foreshadowing of what's going on today, we're going to be breaking down one of the trades I had yesterday where we secured over 100% profit. So I'm going to just give you some thought processes and why I took the trade and just some different confirmations on what I look for. So let me kind of give paint the picture really quickly. So QQQ was triple topping. And then, well, technically at the time it wasn't triple topping, but it looked, you know, pretty, pretty triple top ish. And then if you look back at Apple from yesterday as well, if you can kind of see here, same thing, super bear structure. And then if you look at Microsoft, same thing, bear structure, right? So for people that don't know, uh, Microsoft and Apple have the highest weight uh, in the ETF of both a spy and QQQ. So basically knowing that all of those are, all of those, you know, things are adding up like Microsoft is bearish, Apple is bearish, and QQQ is possibly starting to turn bearish. That's a pretty good indication to, instead of looking for calls here, you want to possibly look to short it. So what, so what happened is, so we ended up rejecting off this key 311 region and we started forming a possible triple top and then i was looking and making sure that microsoft and apple were still looking pretty bearish i was making sure that the volume and everything price action wise all pretty much pieced together like a puzzle i want to see everything all bearish so to, to allow me to get into the specific trade so what happened was is i actually missed the initial drive down um, because it flushed pretty quickly, but I realized I don't want to chase this because I made a lesson about this before, but I don't want to chase this because my risk to reward is not in my favor here. I already missed that drive down. You, this is not in your favor. You want to be entering before the move or during a consolidation like where I entered. So I, I waited patiently for a couple minutes, about 15 minutes I waited, and I saw more of a uh, bearish pennant being formed. So that's a bearish sign. And I entered not the best, but I didn't enter completely, you know, midway through. So I, my premium for my contract ended up being pretty good in my favor. So what happened was instead of being all antsy and possibly cutting, because this is what I saw in the moment, I saw a possible reversal. I waited and stayed patient and said, okay, here's a low, here's a lower high. Uh, here's a high, here's a lower high. And then now we're rejecting again and making another lower high. So this is still considering a bearish structure. So I did not have any reason to get out of this trade just yet. So this is why I stayed in the trade. So just because the trade didn't work out right away in my favor, I stayed true to my game plan and I waited and made sure that I didn't get you know, I wasn't invalidated because the moment we start, you know, coming up here and breaking above this high, then yes, I'm, I'm definitely invalidated. But we ended up making a lower high, staying in a bear structure, and then the volume started picking up here. You see the volume start picking up. And what happened was just because my entry wasn't perfect, but I stayed the course, I stayed true to the game plan, didn't cut out of you know fear of it reversing, and then it ended up rewarding me very well. So what happened was I start, I had three targets in mind. I had a target here where this was a liquidity area right here. We ended up finding new support there. So that was my first target. I trimmed here. And then this area down here was another little liquidity area. If you see here, lots of little support came through and price action came through today took an LR1 right off the table here. And then this was actually my third target, which was pretty much where we rejected off first. Remember, this is where we first got rejected. So that now turned to support. So that was my final target. Now, I secured my entire trade along the way. So I wasn't super emotional, right? Because it could have, you know, it's very simple that something like this could happen. It could easily just reverse on me. So knowing that I already secured along the way, I wasn't as emotional and I was able to hold one runner just because my last contract was right here, but I held one runner and I ended up cutting somewhere down here. I didn't cut at the, the true bottom of this candle, but I cut somewhere right here, right here. So that 
So doing so, I ended up getting a much better profit. So what I mean by that is, so from just to kind of, we'll visualize the trade out real quickly. So my planned R multiple, which means my plan risk to reward I had for this trade going into it was probably something like that. So right above the break of structure, give myself a couple pennies. Actually, nope, sorry about that. This is where I entered. And this will be my stop loss right about up here. Give myself a couple pennies. And then this right here was my planned R multiple. So I had a seven to one because this is where I want it, my three targets. Now, obviously, if that didn't happen and we start reversing here, clearly I'm going to derive from the plan because it's not going in my favor. But this is what I planned for. Now, because I cut and trimmed along the way, I didn't feel super antsy right? Because I already secured most of my money. It's basically a risk-free trade. So I ended up having a realized R multiple of nine to one. So I ended up getting a better risk reward than I thought I would, right? Now, obviously you could have, you know, I'm not saying you could, you know, it's possible you could snipe the bottom, you know, which would have been technically upwards of 12 to one, but I was perfectly fine with this profit. You know, this is only, like 10, 15 minutes of time, I was perfectly cool with the profit. So I cut it and we ended up getting nine to one risk to reward. So let's say I entered a shit time. So this, this, is, this ended up really well because I entered at a good time, right? Now let's say I entered pretty poorly and I entered as it already went down, as it's flushing. I'm like, oh, crap, 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 FOMO, FOMO. And you're just like, oh shit, let me buy this right here. And then you say you enter halfway down. Look at this risk reward. So let's say you enter here and your stop loss is still the same. Your stop loss is still up there, a break of structure. And then here's your plan marketable. So your, your plan tray was two and a half to one. A lot different than that plan seven to one, wasn't it? Right? So like, this is why you don't chase during the overall as it's flushing in a sense, or as it's rallying, either or. So it's very, very important because one, you're getting a shit pretty much risk reward trade. And secondly, the most important thing is you're not getting a fair deal, deal for your value, you know, because of the IV is pretty much getting a spike here and there's more volume being flooded into that contracts. So what happens is your premium price, so the cost of your contracts is going to increase. So let's just give an arbitrary number. If I enter here, I'm probably entering for $100. Whereas even if I'm here, which isn't that much of a move down yet, I'm probably entering at $130, you know, maybe 150. It really depends on how the premium is moving that specific day, but you get the point. Say if I'm in 10 contracts, I'm wasting money doing this. Like I'm literally wasting, I'm pissing away money, literally pissing away. So there's two ways to trade breakouts. You either get in before the move or you get in during the pullback. That's, if you get in as it's you know flushing like this, you're going to have a really bad risk to reward trade and your contract is not going to be a fair value. And also another thing, what's not to say it starts reversing here. So you got a really, really bad deal for your contract value and then it just reverses. So you end up basically selling for a loss very quickly because that easily could have happened as well. So you want to wait either for the pullback to happen and then enter. So like in this pullback or even in this pullback, obviously this is stretched. So I would probably have traded this, but you get the point. You want to look for the pullbacks to enter if you miss the initial impulse out. Don't enter halfway through because every single stock, every single time will have some sort of a pullback that, and consolidation. That's when you want to get in if you miss the move. Don't get FOMO. Don't think, oh, you know, geez, let me get in now or I'm going to miss all those trades and miss all the money. Nope. I missed all this. All of it. I missed it all. I didn't get mad. I waited for a better setup, took the better setup and still got rewarded. So don't just funnel into shit because you're, you're FOMOing in a sense, right? Um, so that's pretty much the breakdown of this trade. Let me just answer your question super quickly. A triple top is bearish. Yes, a triple top is bearish. Um, I try to chase the trade and not when it's being set up. Yeah, we, I kind of just discussed that. You don't want to chase trades because of those two reasons, your risk to rewards against you and simply because of 
uh, you're not getting a fair deal for your contracts. So you want to get in before the move and during the consolidation, or you want to get in as it's pretty much pullback. Um, do you only use the three minute for scalps? Uh, I mean, it really depends on how aggressive I want to enter or exit. I could enter on the two minute or I could enter on the three minute, maybe even the four minute. It really depends on how aggressive I want to be. Um, I do not, do not, do not, do not enter on the one minute. Uh, it's very unreliable in this market environment. You're going to get faked out. So just, I would ideally hope that you use, if you're day trading, if you're scalping, probably use anywhere from like the two to the seven minute for entries. Obviously, if you're scalping, you don't want to use seven minute, but day trading, it's a very good under underrated time frame. If you haven't used the seven minute, I would check that out. I would also check out the four minute. Hope that helps. Liquidity pocket uh, equals consolidation. So what I mean by liquidity area, it's pretty much where uh, participants are trading by. So, so you see the liquidity here, the price actions right here, the price actions right here at this other line, price actions right here. Whereas like right here, um, let me try to find one that doesn't really make sense. So like, obviously this is high a day. Now don't think of anything else. See, say, say you only see this, nothing else. There's no consolidation. There's no price action. There's no real volume here, right? So like you need to see, you need to see pretty much participants. That's what I mean by a liquidity pocket. Hope that answers your question. Mm, this class is exactly what I needed. Appreciate those kind words. Uh, what does QQQ look like going into tomorrow? Anything can happen overnight, but we did have a uh, triple top going into to, to pretty much end of the day. So we could very well possibly bounce off of one of these levels. If we don't bounce, we're going to go lower. If we do bounce, we'll probably go back up here somewhere. So we're either going to 300, 300, excuse me, 303 to 300 tomorrow, or we're going to go anywhere from 308 to 310, something like that. Uh, I hope that answers your question. Is a triple bottom bullish? Yes, triple bottom is bullish. What indicators do you use? So um, I'm just, since I'm only talking about day trading and scalping here, I'm just going to talk about only those indicators for the sake of time. I like to use the VWAP, which is the volume weighted average profile. If you're not familiar with that, I'll link that in my uh, end to the, the Zoom chat in a second here, just in case, because I made a video about the VWAP and the importance of using VWAP. Um, I also use moving averages. I don't really use the smaller moving averages that most people use. I use mostly the higher moving averages. So I'm able to get um, better risk reward trades, such as the 50, the 200 day and the 300 day. Like if you find rejections off the, the 200 day moving average or a bounce off a 200 day moving average, that is basically green flag to take a trade as long as the volume is stepping up. Um, definitely keep that in mind. I'm trying to find a good, uh, good picture of where that happened. Uh, what happened? Re here we go. This is a good picture. So if you kind of see here, we ended up making, well, we ended up making a double top, but it failed until the next day. But if you look here, this purple line, and this white line is both a VWAP and the 200 day moving average. If you ever see price action with volume start coming here and bouncing or rejecting, that's, basically telling you, hey, bud, get the hell in this trade because this is a fantastic trade because your, your risk to reward, if you look here, you would enter here, your stop loss is underneath the VWAP and the 200 day and your first real target somewhere up here. So look at that. You just got an eight and a half to one trade simply by understanding this VWAP and 200 day moving average. Hope that helps. Um, I don't really use anything else. I don't really like to clutter my screen with lots of indicators. I just use that and VWAP for day trading and scalps. How do you see where there is liquidity pockets or high liquidity areas? Good question. So um, that kind of goes into the next point where it would take a little bit of time to really talk about that. So I'm gonna link that in the video as well. So where you wanna see true liquidity spots is pretty much with supply and demand. That's like true, true liquidity spots. So I'll post that in the chat real quick. Um, definitely, definitely a very good one to check out. And before I forget, let me just put that VWAP video in. Do, do, do. There we go. 
there you go. There's some homework for you guys. Definitely some very good education behind those videos. Um, so that'll answer that question. One second here. Did you start your $500 account challenge? No, I'll do it next week for everyone. Uh, where will you see Amazon tomorrow? Sure, one sec. Uh, hard to say, could go back down to here, find liquidity and continue higher or it can pretty much reject overnight and continue downwards, or it could bounce in pre-market and just continue higher. It really depends on the day. You, wanna, you don't wanna just have one bias coming into the day. You wanna have different scenarios. So there's three different scenarios that could happen tomorrow. Hope that helps. Oops, sorry about that, wrong button. Uh, one second, any more questions before we end our lesson today? Actually, hold on, one, one thing I wanna mention really quickly. So I didn't alert this in the chat because usually when I take um, riskier trades, I don't like to alert them just because I don't like when other people lose money on my cord. So at first I was actually, this is why I have this right here, able to flip biases is important. At first, before I called out puts, I was actually looking for calls here. I was in a call right here. And it obviously ends up rejecting. So I cut for a, a small loss. And most people, well, it really depends. It, it, most people either have hopium and basically don't take a stop loss until it's really detrimental. And they're just like, oh, screw this, let me get out. Or they, or that's like the bad aspect or the better aspect is just honest understanding that it didn't work out in your favor. Your thesis invalidated. So let me just cut because if I don't cut at a timely manner up here for a small loss, I could possibly be cutting down here for a much bigger loss, right? So that's how I think about it. It's like, hey man, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking to myself, all right, bud, do you want a $50 loss, a small $50 loss, or do you want a $150 loss, right? So I'd rather, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping you guys will feel the same. You want a smaller loss than a bigger loss any single day, right? So now that's when you want to be able to flip biases. In this case, I took a loss. I kind of shrugged it off. I was like, okay, I see that triple top actually, you know, forming. It's kind of, it's kind of going back down today. Let me get out of my bullish nature. Let me get out of this bias and let me look for puts. So I don't care about this little loss here. It happened. You know, my ego is, I'm not going to let it, you know, damage my ego. I'm not going to let it damage my day. I'm just going to take the loss, move on, because I know that, you know, this is a high probable trade. I don't want to miss this trade. We already talked about the confirmations with the Microsoft, the Apple, you know, everything lining properly. So I know this is a good risk to reward setup, in my opinion. So I'm going to take it. I'm going to take those setups any day, right? So just because I took a loss, I'm not going to be like, oh, close my laptop. God damn it. You know, be all pissy about it. So waited for a better setup, took some puts. And I, I made back that entire loss. I made all of that loss back with these puts. So it didn't really matter anyway. Um, so that's definitely something that's super, super important, especially when if you're a day trader or a scalper, you, you kind of have to be not one directional bias. Like the market moves up and down. Like you can't just be like, oh, I think today's going to be bullish. And then only, you know, only be bullish when the market's, you know, selling off the entire day. Or you come into the market, oh, we're going to have a recession. Uh, you know, it's going to be bearish and the market just, you know, rallies the entire day, right? So you can't just have one specific bias, especially as an intraday trader, because you need to understand you are able to make money both directions. Now, you guys, most people in here are probably newer traders that came in during the Corona run up. You got lucky. If you made money, most of the time you got lucky simply because the market went up straight for months. Now you're having some issues because the market is not doing that anymore. You have to understand that market from last year is entirely different from this market right now. You have to switch your game plan. You have to understand that whatever strategy you, you were using possibly is not working anymore and you might have to deviate. You might have to you know, adjust it for real life example. Last year, I would use the one minute time frame religiously. I love scalping on the one minute time frame. I tried to do that in January and February of this year, thinking you know the exact same thing could happen for me. I could get wins. I got pooped on. 
the one minute is not reliable right now. It's, it's very, it's very, you know, it's not reliable whatsoever. So now I had to, that's an example of where I had to adjust my plan. And now I use at least the two minute or I use the three minute. So it's very, very important just because you were winning last year during a, you know, one of the best bull markets ever doesn't mean you're going to automatically lose, you know, win this year, the market is entirely, entirely different. So it's very, very important to realize this and actually understand this. Um, please stop screwing with my screen and take it off. I'd really appreciate it. But anyway, um, lost my train of thought there, but I hope that little wisdom helped you. Do you guys have any questions or any comments, anything you want to talk about real quick before we end our lesson? Didn't really have anything else to plan. I kind of just wanted to talk about, um, you know, just the, the pretty much the trade I took yesterday. Any questions at all, just feel free to drop them in the chat. Whatever your question is, just drop it in the chat. Uh, my Instagram, um, sure. My Instagram, I made a new one, is scrub Gen X. Okay, hope that answers your question. Um, one last question on my small account. Sure, what's your question? Uh, like I said before, you don't want to just have one bias. I don't know if it's going to pull back tomorrow. I don't know if it's going to continue. It's hard to say until tomorrow. Anything can happen overnight. Uh, can you chart levels on SPY? No, I'm not going to do that. It's going to take too much time. I have a video already about that. And I'll link that Belpy in the chat. One second here. Very, 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 very good one. I'd highly recommend watching that one, um, especially if you're familiar with... Uh, not like not familiar with levels. Um, definitely something to, to check out. Uh, hold on, let me answer questions one more time. Uh, not able to grow my small account for over a year. Send me a message personally. We'll review your trades together and we'll see what's going on. Um, one second, what is your Discord link? Got you. Let me, let me send that for you if you want to check it out. I have my own Discord. Um, don't really advertise it much, but if you want to check it out, come on through, it's free. Post that in the chat as well. Do you have a channel for your videos? I, I linked my YouTube three times. It's it's right in there. I'll link it one more time for you. Do, 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 do. Any other questions? Awesome. Well, I appreciate you guys for listening. So I just want to do one more quick announcement. I'm considering doing a mentorship for three month period. Now it's not going to be the traditional, you know, someone's going to teach you for eight hours or 12 hours and set you free. I want you, your attention for three months at least. So this way I'm able to gauge your progress and actually we can work together. So if you're interested in that, send me a message. I'm still considering it. It's going to be a small class, maybe like five people over a three month duration. Um, appreciate you guys for listening. Hope you said, uh, learn some stuff. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Stay safe and I'll see you guys tomorrow.